Did you know that we produce over $62.5 billion worth of electronic waste each year? That's more than the GDP of most countries. I know that image, and it's really, really important. I'm not trying to change that, but I've come all the way to Manchester. These are brilliant, don't get me wrong, but I've come all the way here to see this. I, um, I was talking about this. This is a full-scale, drivable Gen 3 Formula E race car made entirely from electronic waste. If you like the Fully Charged show, then you'll love our live events. Next up, we're in Amsterdam for Fully Charged Live Europe on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. Get your tickets today. $62.5 billion is the equivalent of 50 million tonnes of e-waste. That is a staggering volume of materials that gets chucked away each year. Absolute madness. A few months ago, we visited the London XL ahead of the British e Prix to watch the launch of this e-waste Formula E car. Fear not drive five fans, that's not the speed a Formula E car normally goes, but it's perhaps not the white knuckle drive you really wanted either. But there's a really, really important message here. That car is jam-packed with stuff that you have at home and all of those things are filled with cobalt, manganese, lithium, rare earth materials, stuff that we dig out of the ground and are critically important to electric vehicles and this clean technology transition. Maybe we could dig up a little less of it if we turn to our drawers and shelves first and did a little bit of urban mining, if you will. The e-waste Formula E car was designed and built in Manchester by Liam and his team at Lazarian Studios and is based on a Formula E Gen 3 car. The car is made of electronic waste such as iPhones, Xboxes and vapes, some of which are only a week old. But then it isn't, it isn't just a bits of electronics stuck on a, an existing car, you've, you've, you've built the whole thing, I mean that's, that's what's extraordinary. Yeah. So literally built from, from scratch. Uh, so uh, I drew the, the car out at, at one to one scale. Right. Uh, laid it down on the table and literally made the chassis from, from the ground up right. basically. Right. So I bought uh, an old electric beach buggy oh, uh, right. for, the, for the drivetrain. Uh, so the, the, the rear axle, I've had to adjust it. Right. Uh, but I didn't want to buy new. No. Uh, it was all, this, this old project is about Actually, oh. what can we reuse? Uh, what can we repurpose? Yeah. And if not, you know, when we're, we're recycling, that's yeah. where we can. But then what's amazing is when you look closely, I mean, that, that, there's a couple of things that really caught my eye when we first looked around it. One is the, the, the is copper. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, coppers in everything, we, any electronics have got yeah. copper in. But you see these sort of smashed backs of, of phones and that, that's what's inside, which is a little reel of copper. That's the reach, so that's when you put it down and it charges. Yeah, so that's the, the wireless charging. Yeah, isn't that uh, amazing? Which is a beautiful thing it's always like a it's like a little record, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean what is amazing, which is what we kind of need to be aware of because it's not just electric cars or anything like that that you we dig stuff up for. But you know, that would, would have been a large lump of rock that had to be refined and crushed down and broken down to get that, that much copper out. Yeah. Did you know that there are enough cables hoarded in UK homes to circle the earth five times? And in fact, 7% of the world's gold is currently contained in e-waste. Now, if the driver looked familiar to you, that's because you may have recognised him from Netflix's Umbrella Academy or from his work as United Nations Goodwill Ambassador for Climate Action. What do you think individuals should be doing to reduce their e-waste footprint? That's a good question. I think it really depends on your lifestyle, but the important thing is just that you're not uh, throwing it out without a second thought. There are a lot of different ways that you can, depending on what it is like, that you can make sure that it's not just going to waste. So sometimes you can trade in, sometimes you can repair, uh, or donate, or sell, uh, or find the proper facilities that will actually extract the minerals from, uh, from what you have and make sure that none of it's going to waste. The electronic waste used to construct this car ranges in age from decades to weeks old. One of the most shocking finds from our trip to Manchester was the amount of wasted materials from vapes alone. So this is such an amazing example of that. I mean, are these are it's just I mean, this is a, a small section of your collection of vapes. 
And these are really new things, aren't they? That, that is really new. And it's all been chucked out. But then this is what is really stunning, is this... I had no idea they had these in. I thought, I assumed it would be like a little watch battery. It's a big battery. Yeah. And, and they've uh, got... A, a LiPo battery to that. So, like, right. you know, a really, Rechargeable. really... Yeah, so, like, right. you, you can get over 500 recharges from these. Right. And it'll still keep, uh, you know, a really good charge. That's incredible. And, and we used to... Well, the, these are all designed for, for single use. Yeah, yeah. So they're doing... But you, you can't know, recharge them. You've got to break them apart to get <laughs> to the battery. There's no charging port on them is there i've got to do this because we don't normally do this but the, the stats are just so staggering so last year in the uk alone 168 million of those were sold which is incredible which is and then 50 percent of them they, it's estimated about 50 percent of them literally thrown away so go into landfill just put in a bin put in landfill which is about 84 million vapes so 84 million of those get thrown away which is 310 megawatt hours of battery capacity, which is enough for 6,200 Tesla Model 3s. Admittedly, if you've made a battery pack with these in a Tesla Model 3, probably not the optimal way of doing it. But the fact is, that's usable material. That is, you know. Exactly. Um, it's you know, literally throwing it away. And, and this is what I'm hoping by, by this project is just to make people realize yeah. that in these things that we used to just throwing away, is that even you can get really just really simply creative yeah and you could just put six of them together and you've got yourself a storage bank to power your phone right for probably a week <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, that's crazy isn't it yeah. uh you yeah. know for just a simple task of just someone soldering a few wires together yeah. and yeah. uh you've Making got yourself a little, a, pack that holds a little power bank yeah Whilst each of us can do our bit to buy less and recycle more, there is a bigger challenge here. At the moment, only about 20% of our e-waste gets formally recycled, with 80% going to landfill or being informally recycled, often by hand and often in developing countries, exposing workers to hazardous and carcinogenic substances. MIT's Professor Carla Ratti has been tracking what happens to our e-waste once it gets thrown away. A few years ago, we started looking at electronics in order to track electronics. So in other terms, we put a number of uh, tracer onto e-waste and then we follow the waste across the planet in order to look at what goes to the right place, the wrong place and so on. And we think that's very important because if you better understand what is going on today, if you use data, big data in particular, then we can start fixing loopholes and hopefully work to design better systems. The results we found actually led to a documentary by PBS uh, following some of these pieces of, um, of e-waste. Uh, and again, you know, some of the e-waste from the United States shipped around the world, some of that goes through legal routes, but also we find a number of questionable ones. Now, it's not too up to decide if they are legal or not legal, but certainly by making the system more transparent, we can help improve it. And so now that you have that, that data and you've been able to identify some of those loopholes, what would be your recommendations to the powers that be? One of the very exciting things uh, about data is that when you share it, when you make it transparent, then it, uh, it starts feedback loops. We're talking about feedback loops with, uh, with citizens or feedback loops with politicians at all different levels. Think about the city level, the regional level, the national level, the super national level. Again, you know, those feedback loops are very important. It means increased knowledge and hopefully work together towards a better planet. Fortunately, we are seeing more and more companies stepping in to prevent e-waste ending up in landfill. Apple has pioneered a phone recycling robot and hopes that by 2025, new handsets will use 100% recycled cobalt. Redwood materials are collecting e-waste to turn into EV batteries. And here in the UK, Music Magpie, who provided Liam with many of the materials that make up the e-waste Formula E car, are breathing new life into thousands of old devices. But what is amazing is you, I, I can't help thinking someone like that might have, you know, a little box of old electronics, but it's not. It's basically truckloads, isn't it? I mean, that's what's so oh, shocking yeah. is how much of it there is. So, like, the, the first the first uh, visit over there, I uh, come back with eight pallets. Wow. Uh, and it was just wow. unbelievable. Yeah. So, like, 
it was it was almost like one of them container openings, you know, yeah. like what's gonna be in here. Yeah. Expecting, like you say, old old things. Yeah. And actually, you know, we're talking goods here that are two you know, year, two, three years old. It's exactly. actually extraordinary, isn't it? If you're able to say to some of the manufacturers of some of these products, what would be your message to them? Circular economy. We should make sure that we're getting our resources to build these devices uh, from previous devices. So, yeah, if we don't cut down on the cycle of just continually producing e-waste, we're going to have 75 million tons of e-waste generated annually. Uh, by 2030. So when you realize that statistic and the gravity of that sort of falls on you, it becomes incredibly important to start doing something. And the corporations manufacturing these things have the biggest ability to make that change. Uh, and that's like a continual thing with the climate crisis in general. It's like there's the individual and then there's the group and you have to attend to both. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. That car is headed around the world to raise awareness to the extent of our e-waste problem. And wouldn't it be fantastic if in the future it wasn't even possible to make that car because we're recycling our e-waste so efficiently. One person's trash is another's treasure and today that absolutely could not be more true.